we are live. Welcome to... There he is. Welcome to... O ones Down, or The Shaft If You're Nasty, Review and Thoughts Film. So, I realize this video is long, but if you are only interested in the review, that part of the video is fairly, comparatively, short. At least, that's the idea. To see its length, check the time codes in the description box. I start this video with a review either with zero spoilers, or if I spoil anything, I'll warn you before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. But as soon as I end the review itself, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. Now... So, the plot. New York, the Millennium Building. I mean, it looks like the Empire State Building, but I guess they didn't want to ruin that building's reputation. The elevator and the skyscraper start behaving weirdly, violently, to where people might get hurt, even die, using it. Now, if this is something you have never heard of, it is an action horror mystery released in 2001, made by... I'm probably going to mess up his name, sorry. I don't have any ill will towards the Dutch, but I'm not very experienced in pronouncing the name. So here goes Dick Moss, a Dutch director doing an American remake of his own beloved movie. We've seen this kind of thing before, you know, The Rudge, The Ring 2, and hypothetically maybe there's at least one good movie out there that's... It's, anyway, and, yeah, didn't, didn't also... Um, Michael Haneke, I think, directed the American language remake of his own Funny Games, but I haven't watched either of those. But yeah, The Grudge and The Ring 2, yikes. And, and this one, I have not watched the original Lift, but it sounds like it's a lot better. So, And apparently he's like kind of a legend in Holland for like... Yeah, maybe I'll I'll try to find. There's some really good stuff in this movie. I I and I wish that I could say this was the good version of the movie, but yeah, seems like the original is the good version. But yeah, basically, you know, the movie is trying to exploit people's fears of elevators for easy horror fodder and just have a good time. And some of the time, it succeeds. I'm not going to be talking very much about... This movie was released after 9-11. When they made the movie, they did not know that 9-11 was going to happen. So it isn't intentionally feeding off that tragedy. With that said, it is still very uncomfortable to see exterior shots of the Twin Tower. And... There's some very direct references that... Again, they didn't, they didn't know what was going to happen. But yeah, just know if you're going to watch it, that's something that's going to, you know, for some people, this will be enough to put them off the movie. And I completely understand that. And you're not missing that much. Anyway. Let's see. Yeah, the, the, once this was released, Naomi Watts had already starred in The Ring. Which she hadn't when they were filming it. So, you know, it was delayed because of 9-11. So some of the DVD covers have been redesigned to resemble the ring. Which is is really ridiculous, but yeah. But yeah, this is this is very much the key to this is that it is I'm I'm some of this is just gonna be me quoting my old IMDB review. The key to this is that it is entirely a B-movie. You're not meant to take it seriously, it's not trying to change your life, and it is quite cheesy. I wish that the movie... When, when the movie is at its peak, it makes you wish that the rest of the movie was like it. I'd say 20 or 30% of this movie is exactly the kind of movie that the rest of the movie should be. And it really... Like, like it's... 
it's 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 very frustrating watching this movie because every so often there'll be some like do you know the game Operation? That's a really dated reference, isn't it? I'm gonna stick with it though. If this movie was Operation, then the the you know the the person playing was constantly going into the wrong, you know, pressing down the wrong you know thing and and the the buzzing or what I haven't played the game. I just I've seen video footage of it, you know. But occasionally it hits it right and it's like excellent, just just stay there, you know. And I'm gonna try to explain why that is. Briefly I will say there are B movies out there that are so bad they're good, like Battlefield Earth, or bad and fun like Mimic Species, Friday the thirteenth, those movie series in, in you know you know there there are B movies out there that are just trying to put as much sex and violence into a single movie that they're really fun, like Piranha 3D. But this just isn't you know yeah like Maybe not Species 4, and certainly I understand why some people feel that Mimic 3 is also, but, but other than that, like, if, if, if I'm sitting down and I want to watch something cheesy and dumb and just have fun with it, and it's between this movie and one of the Friday the 13th movies, I'm almost definitely going to go with one of the Friday the 13th movies and I'm not I'm not a huge fan of those but at least they're they're fun they they understand their audience they know what we sit down to watch and this movie it it almost does feel like they're kind of trolling us cuz every so like like it's this for a lot of it it's just straightforward and you're just kind of okay move on yeah and then every so often there'll be this, they'll just dangle this incredible, like, something that's amazing in front. Like, there's, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil them right here. Let's see. Okay, yeah, just real quick. I'm going to give a few quick spoilers. So, you know, mute if you don't want, for this movie, spoilers for this movie. There's... A plot point where dolphin brains, dolphin brains were used as part of creating like smart weaponry, like military research. There's a character, there's a female character who's convinced that the th the whole thing is because of her husband's death, and she like chants. And, and she's like spinning around, chanting, and the other characters are kind of just acting like she's not doing that. And then they're trying to have a conversation with her, and eventually she stops spinning, and then she just goes on having a conversation with them. Like, she didn't just spin around, like, just... Sometimes this movie is amazing. No more spoilers for the time being. I wish that this movie was exactly what... Because when it gets it right, like... I would say the last 15 minutes of this movie are just about exactly what I wanted out of the movie. And I'm not saying that the entire movie should have been as intense or as big as that. But I, I do maintain that the rest of the movie could, has, could have been as ridiculous as that. Now, obviously, part of why people find the premise scary is that everyone, literally, if... If you live near at least one elevator, then at least once in your life, you've been in a weirdly behaving elevator, and you're like, is this it? Is this how I'm going to die? You know, and once, you know, eventually you're let out, you know, hopefully you didn't have to stay in there for an extremely long time. And, you know, you see this movie and it's like, oh, I remember that fear, you know, similar to the the... I've only watched the first dentist movie, but yeah, you know, it's it's just going off what if 
in this situation that we can't avoid. You know, you can't always take the stairs. What if something really horrifying happened and, you know, the, the, it was, it was never going to be this really deep, thoughtful movie. And I'm really glad that it understood that and didn't try to be, but it could have been a more fun movie because the moment that you're not in that situation, like the moment you step back out of the elevator, you're like, why did I think I was going to die? That's ridiculous. It's an elevator. It's not, you know, but we did, it's, it, it's, you know, the lizard brain freaks out when our feet are not touching the ground and there's some, and, and we can't quite control exactly, just, yeah. Now, honestly, when the movie actually goes for tension and suspense with, like, sound effects and music that implies something supernatural and sinister going on, and editing and cinematography that really builds, it tends to do well. And I think they could have made the whole thing effectively scary if they devoted the, you know, if they really went for that. It reminded me somewhat of Jason X. Like, when that movie, excuse me, when that movie actually tries to be scary, it can be kind of scary, but most of the time, it would rather be annoying or funny and, you know, just, yeah. You will not, on this channel, hear very many positive things said about the movie Jason X. There are very few movies that I would say are worse than that movie, but I'm, I, don't, I don't know that, nah, honestly, yeah, overall, that movie is better than this one. It's, they, they, it's, it's consistent. It's, when it's not scary, it's not trying to be scary, and they kind of figured, we have nine movies before this one. If people still find it scary, if, you know, if, if people who still want to be scared should just watch one of the other movies. But let's be honest, it's, you know, by, when Jason X came out, the series, you know, the, the year that it was released was 21, 21 years after the first movie was released. At that point, if you're still scared of it, it, you know, either the series is doing an incredible job at continuing to be scary, or it's like, okay, you know, let's let's have some fun with it. Let's let's be fun, you know. And yeah, if this movie, if they had made like a bunch of these, I, I am aware there are a few other movies where you know people are caught in an elevator and it's like M Night Shyamalan's Devil. Ah, crap! I forget what the last one is called. M. Night Shyamalan's Devil, The Lift, and there's at least one other, I feel like, and then this. This is the only one of them I've seen. If this had been, like, the 12th, you know, th yeah, didn't the Amityville horror movies also start getting ridiculous after a while? Maybe not after very long. You know, but it's essentially the first. I realize for the director it's the second, but, yeah. Now, yeah, so this was written by Dick Moss. And I am not familiar with anything else that he has made at, at all. This is literally the only thing. It's, I, has he directed anything else? English language? I'm not entirely sure. I wouldn't mind watching his Dutch horror movies. I don't really, like, I haven't been avoiding them. It's just that this was the one I happened to find when I was out shopping for horror movies. But, yeah, you know, he's he's known for various other Dutch horror, and some people say it's, it, some of his horror movies are absolutely amazing, and I don't have any real reason to doubt that. I'm, I'm sure they are. Now, the movie does fine with, like, making the most out of the, the concept. They, they, it's very clear that they wanted to make sure there was a decent variety of like when when it comes to gore and violence and just yeah you know the 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 way that the elevator behaves you know like like there are times where it's just you know when like when when like the doors will start to close and it's like whoa dude i, I wasn't in yet you know and and it may be you're you're you know you you worry that it's gonna like catch 
part of your body on, you know, that the door is going to close enough that you can't get, you know, it, yeah, it, it makes, I suppose I could briefly, yeah, tell you what, spoilers for the, the kills of the movie, so if you don't want to know that going in, mute and skip ahead. Some people get stuck in the the elevator door. There's one person whose head is like, uh, what's it called? I forget if it's the elevator going up or down, but his head is sticking out into, through the door and like caught in the door and gets chopped off. There's a bit where the floor of the elevator gives out and a bunch of people fall you know, and several of them at first they hang on by dear life, but then they eventually have to, you know, eventually they can't hold on anymore and they fall down. There's a guy who gets sucked in and then spat back out at, at the very top floor and he goes flying off. And we don't see him land, but we see like blood spray up on one of his friends when he, you know, hits the ground hard. Let's see, there's a, there's a guy who gets chopped in half like he was you know, part way in the elevator, and, like, I think it's around the, the legs he gets cut off. I think that might be more... Yeah, and, and then there's one guy, a blind guy, walks in... You know, he thinks that the, the elevator is there. But in reality, there's no elevator there, so he just walks in and falls over. And I think those are... I think that's everything, yeah, so no more spoilers. But I, yeah, I would say that they, they understood how to make elevators scary kind of thing work. But yeah, like, if either the movie had always been going for, for scaring you, or always been really ridiculous and, you know, but, but at times it's just, excuse me, it's just very average and just, well, you know. And there's, there's no way in the universe or the hypothetical multiverse that a movie about a killer elevator should leave you going, eh, it was okay. Come on. I'm not going to tell you what turns out to be the explanation for the killer elevator. Not only because you wouldn't believe me if I did, but I will say it's a very memorable answer. Tell you what, yeah, sure. Spoilers. There are a couple of different answers given. Some people think it's a it's because uh, it was built on a Native American bear, uh, grave yard. Some people say that it's um, radioactivity. And I would say the two most prevailing theories are that. It's because of one of the people who worked there who died in a really violent way and his ghost is haunting the elevator. And the, the final, and I think this is supposed to be the, the actual solution, it seems to have the most evidence, is that a military scientist was doing experiments using human tissue. Originally he was using dolphin tissue, but he went over to human tissue and it led to the elevator having a heart and it was like, they say it's reproducing. I'm not 100% sure what that's even supposed to mean in this context. <laughs> okay, when a, when a mother elevator and a father elevator love each other very much, but, but yeah, it seems like the, the elevator is alive because it has, you know, human tissue as a, as a heart. No more spoilers for now. Not until the next time I won. Or, yeah, next time I won. I mean, the direction, it's frustrating that Dick Ma's understands how to make it work and at times the movie is very focused like there are a couple of scenes in this where for a few minutes in a row 
the movie has, at least me, and I think at least some other people, in a vice-like grip. We cannot stop watching, but then not long after that, it just goes back and it's aimless a bunch of the time. And I, I don't know. I don't know if he was, like, being paid to make the movie longer. I mean, I know that a lot of American filmmakers are encouraged to make their movies shorter so that they can fit in more showings. But, yeah. And I, I will say, when the movie is at its best, you can tell Dick Maas chose to make the movie. It wasn't some, like, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a director for hire. They, you know, they approached him. Do you want to make an American version of your Dutch horror movie? We're going to pay you a lot of money. And, you know, the, like, I forget exactly what the budget was for the Dutch one, but I think for the American, for this one, it was like 15 million American dollars, which is pretty decent for, I mean, it's not huge, but then, you know, a lot of, it's, it's not like the movie requires an extremely high budget. Once you have, you know, the Millennium Building sets and, you know, access to elevators, you know, at, at that point, it's just about the, the, you know, making, yeah, making the gore and violence and such work. And, yeah. The opening of this movie does a decent job of getting your attention. Like, the, the very opening is this, like... It, it, I, I, I didn't know exactly, but I think maybe a minute or maybe 90 seconds of the, of the, I think so, yeah. The opening shot is like a minute or 90 seconds, and it's like, and, and this suspenseful music is playing, and basically you have, like, it's taking place late at night, and if you've ever seen what it looks like to look at a skyscraper or especially like several skyscraper you know tall buildings close to another when it's nighttime you know i don't have to tell you it can look very creepy a building during the day it's like eh, whatever but at night when the surface is pitch black and you have all these little lights on you know, all, every every single window that has a light on glows. It has this very, like, what's the word? If you didn't know better, you might think that you were looking at, like, the eyes of some giant beast. And the movie understands that that's something that's very creepy to look at. And, like... It, it could easily have been just a few seconds of that shot and then it moves on. Because once it moves on, it moves on to something decidedly not scary. You have two... Uh, are they called guards? I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with guards. Two of the guards of the, build, of the Millennium Building and they're using the observation deck to spy on sex. That's not scary unless... Uh, well... Yeah, it's not meant to be scary, and it's not scary in the movie, and that's basically the movie announcing that some of the time it's going to be scary, some of the time it's just going to have fun. And if only the rest of the movie did stick to, you know, it's not, the movie doesn't announce right away that there's also going to be stretches of it that are just boring and should have ended up on the cutting room floor. We, we realize that not terribly long after, but but no, it's a pretty good opening. You know, the, and I would say the opening pretty much, to, like, if the first three minutes of this movie interest you, then there's more of what you like in the rest of the movie. But if the first three minutes leave you kind of feeling like that's not scary, or, ah, come on, that's, why, why is that in the movie? Then you're not going to like the movie. Just shut it off immediately. And the, the ending is quite good, and I, I know some people say the ending is lame. I, I really like the ending. I, I don't really have a lot to 
criticize about the ending. I also try to go into whether you whether the movie loses your interest along the way. I don't. There are times where it tries your patience. There are many times where it tries your patience. But overall, I would say there's just enough of the, you know, of, of the of the weirdness of the kills and gore to to keep your interest, you know. And in in some ways, this is essentially like a parody of the kind of movie that it essentially is, of of this kind of horror movie. Some elements are intentionally comically exaggerated, such as the terrible New York accents and how cheesy it is and such. I, I saw at least one reviewer spell it New York accents and that's very, like, I don't... I think there's a certain chance that the people making this don't know New York, have never met a New Yorker, and have never heard a New Yorker speak with an accent, because, because, yeah, it's, it's like, they are, they are so ridiculously overdone, and I also, I, I do think there's a certain, there's a certain chance that, it's, is Dick Moss, like, A hermit or like I feel like this movie is written by someone who doesn't know how people think how people behave in the real world I realize some of it is you know the movie is intentionally being kind of ridiculous but it does also feel like it I yeah like like a robot trying to synthesize the the behaviors of people it, it just, it, 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 yeah. Anyway. At times, the elevator does basically appear to have free will. And, you know, you, you might think, you know, like, yeah, actually, technically, the following is a spoiler. So, again, spoiling something. You might think that the movie has the, the elevator behave you know, like, yeah, basically act like it can do whatever it wants, because that appears to be, you know, certainly it doesn't seem to have to struggle for control when it really wants, but a lot of the time it just does what the script wants, you know, so there will be things where you think someone is going to get killed, but the, you know, it's not the right time in the movie for it, so the elevator just doesn't, and it's just kind of annoying. I, I just wish that they had, like, an explanation, even if it was, like, ridiculous. Like, let's say, like, in the comics, the Green Lantern Corps are, their, their weakness is the color yellow. Imagine if every single time in this movie, the elevator didn't kill someone or even hurt them, it was because someone was wearing yellow. Like, and especially, if, like, they could have someone entering the elevator, and you can practically hear the elevator cackling, ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to kill you in the most brutal... Oh, crap. He's wearing yellow. Fine. I'll take you to the floor you want. You know, just like... You know, the the, the guy walks in and, and the elevator starts cackling. And the guy is like, oh, it's really hot in here. And he takes off the jacket and underneath he's wearing a yellow shirt. Or something. You know, just, yeah, anyway. No more spoilers. No more spoilers for the time being. So, the... Yeah. James Marshall, who I'm I'm not super familiar with, but apparently he's big on Lynch, plays Mark, one of the elevator repairmen in this, and there's I I he's probably the the character who gets the most screen time and I mean, he's not the most unlikable of all of them, although at times he comes close. And Naomi Watts playing Jennifer Ep excuse me, Jennifer Evans. 
I already mentioned that the cover of this was re you know changed so that they could I almost said copulate. Crap, what's it called? Eh, never mind. So that they could get people to rent this who also liked the, the ring. In this movie, Naomi Watts does in fact play a journalist, and she spends a lot of this movie trying to figure out what's going on. So it's pretty, you know, yeah, that's why, that's, that's part of why they try to capitalize. That was the word. And she's, you know, <laughs> she understands that it's supposed to be ridiculous. They're actually, I, I read that apparently James Marshall disagreed with the director. He didn't think that they should be kind of ridiculous and... There are maybe times where you can tell in his performance that he took it too seriously. You know, most of the most of the actors understand that. Yeah, I'm just again briefly going to read from my own MDB review. Fortunately, the handful of name actors that they got for this are all in on it and don't attempt attempt to change that it's a cheesy B movie. And the characters are unlikable, bordering on obnoxious, and acting is fitting for the tone. And I suppose... I don't have a lot to say. Yeah, Michael Ironside as Gunter Steinberg, he, like, he kind of gives the movie more, like, more, more dimension than it, it really needed to for... Yeah, I, th I think it's one of the, yeah, spoilers. In one scene, he's talking, he's, he's the military scientist who's behind the, the brains of the, of the elevator. And there's a scene where he's talking to the boss at the elevator company, and he kind of plays it like he's hurt that the elevator boss no longer has faith in him you know it's it's the typical movie scene of i thought you had this contained you know kind of thing but he does kind of play it as though i can't believe you'd say that to me and and yeah it adds more than yeah no more spoilers for the time being yeah edward herman dan hedaya ron perlman it's pretty wild that they actually got these guys to, to, yeah. Now, let's see the, yeah, the, the dialogue, you know, again, it, the way the lines are written, they, they clearly understand that, you know, people, yeah, the way they speak. It's not trying to be a serious movie. And yeah, so the dialogue is appropriate, also appropriate in several one-liners, but a lot of time is spent talking, and that's not what the audience is interested in from these. In general, I don't have a problem with strong language, as long as it's not in something that was made for children. This is not really an exception, but to keep in mind, there is a lot of swearing in this. I, it's not like South Park Peter Longer and Uncut, but there are a lot of swears in, in this movie. Yeah, too much of the movie is spent explaining. Worse than the fact that they're constantly talking is that the vast majority of the talking is arguing and being obnoxious. It gets old almost immediately. And there are a number of lines where it feels like the writer was getting paid by the word, was encouraged to make sure the dialogue didn't further the plot, but instead was nothing but grinding gears driving in place. If you remove all of the dialogue that didn't make the movie any better, you cut down the running time by at least a third. The movie would be a lot better off. If you get really bored during this movie, maybe you can try to rank the various lines of dialogue to figure out which is the stupidest, weirdest, most nonsensical. On a rare occasion, the dialogue can actually be funny, entirely by accident, I'm sure. And it is also just, it's written like, does Dick Moss, he, he wrote it. 
is he not that great at English? I don't I don't mean any disrespect. I don't think you're a a lesser person if you don't speak you know a language fluently. But it does kind of feel like the the some of the lines feel like they're written by people who don't completely yeah, who's who don't speak English like what was it called? I think it was maybe called Life Socks or something. It was it was like a it was a um, comedy starring Antonio Banderas. And for a while I didn't understand why it wasn't funny. But then I read a review that pointed out that the director was Italian, directing an English language movie, and verbal comedy is difficult to translate and the review posited that that's what happened there i think that might also be what happened here like there are several times where characters will say something i'm not i'm not asking for the characters to speak the way people do in real life i'm just saying it's legitimate it's kind of off-putting like it it sounds like the again like the in the movie jason x people also speak in in a kind of weird you know some of the characters almost seem like they're aware that they're in a bad movie, you know, so they talk like that, but that works. In this movie, it just feels like they weren't, like, or maybe that, maybe some of it was, was rewritten, like, right before shooting, similar to, like, ah, what's it called, X-Men Origins Wolverine, where just, yeah, some of the things they say, it's just like, did they really just say that? What? Like, there there are times where characters will say certain things because they're trying to get other characters to give them some answers but the things they say some of the time it's just like you can't possibly believe that would get an answer and it's it's characters who are in serious trouble they have to get answers and it doesn't feel like they're just like oh you know it's a character flaw no it feels like they don't it feels like they actually thought that what they're saying would work. It would get them the answers. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the cinematography... Some of it is really, really well filmed. And, yeah, honestly, every time the movie tries to be filmed well, it is filmed really well. The... Some some of the some of the kills are really really well filmed. Which, considering that they involve an elevator, you know, there's barely room inside an elevator for a cameraman to to you know it, maybe today with smaller digital HD cameras, but I I don't think they had really small cameras. And you know, this was filmed in two thousand. I think they still had you know, relatively big, you know, but they, they do a good job. It's filmed really well. And yeah, it's also pretty good editing. Let's see. And the, yeah, so the special effects are fine. Some are almost good. The the practical ones tend to, to work out pretty well. The the CGI has not aged well, and it wasn't that convincing back then either. And the, the stunt work is also pretty decent. Yeah, and you, you see several different places, you know, other than obviously the Millennium Building, and you see multiple of the floors of the Millennium Building. You see the the elevator repair station, you know, you see the control room, you see the lobby, you see the front. And in addition to that, you see some other places around the, the city. You see where some of these characters live. And let's see. Yeah, so, you know, apart, apartment buildings and the the city streets, it, it does, you know, there's, 
there are a good amount of different, ah, uh, what's it called? different settings and you get a decent sense of the the different places around you know one one obvious way to limit the budget of this kind of thing would be for almost every scene to take place inside the skyscraper itself because then you only have to to deal with those sets you know and i, I think that could if if they wanted this to be played seriously i think it could have been cool to to have it entirely set within the 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 all yeah the the skyscraper itself you know but yeah let's see and yeah so the the horror includes body horror horror comedy techno horror i think if i remember what that's you know yeah horror based on the on the on the on technology and yeah and I would say the movie goes for being hmm there's probably more of the movie that goes for being funny than there's that goes for being scary but it's scary every time it tries to be and the the it's, I would say, maybe half the time that it's trying to be funny, it's not funny. Maybe more than half, actually. And I'm aware that there are some horror movies that pride themselves on the fact that it's not actually that funny when it's trying to be. The music is is quite good at, you know, the, the kind of sinister stuff. And the uh, yeah, I like I said, I haven't seen that many movies that are very similar to this. And yeah, some of the violence and gore is pretty effective. I don't think there's too much. I think it's it's about what you'd expect from from the movie. And you know there's there's some of the violence that's very intentionally like inappropriate like offensive and that works pretty well some of the time it does serve a purpose it's definitely fun some of the time including sometimes it, because it's cathartic happening to characters we don't like and Yeah, it's it's a very campy movie, and yeah, you know, at times it tries to take itself seriously, and that, you know, it, it will temporarily work for some of the scares, but, excuse me, ah, what's the word? Of outside of the specific scares, it's not right. Now the the level of realism. There are some pretty ridiculous things in the movie, and yeah, you you need to suspend disbelief a, a lot. And I say that as information, not judgment. I don't think there's anything wrong with bad or. Un unrealistic movies and let's see. yeah so yeah so the the pacing it doesn't move as fast as it should and at an hour and 40 minutes it is way too long for this sort of thing you know with if you don't count the end credits it's an hour and 42 minutes and yeah it's at least 15 minutes long, maybe 20, maybe even 25. And, you know, uh, let's see. The Is it worth the investment of time? Maybe just barely, but maybe watch it with someone who knows which parts to fast forward through. It feels much longer than it is. 
And, you know, since the ending is some of the best the movie gets, I wouldn't say to stop watching after so and so long. And, yeah, I haven't watched the original. Some of the people who have say that this is okay. Some say that it's it makes a lot of sense that they went in the direction they did compared to the original. Now, I would say the movie sets out to offend pretty much everyone. And a lot of the time it is good at being offensive, you know. And like I said, I, I don't personally mind, like... I think if you're going to say something offensive, I I think it's funnier if you make it a joke. Like, there's some people who say something offensive, and then they pretend it was a joke, but really they're just saying what they really think, and they know that it's considered offensive, so they say that it was a joke. But, like, you know, for example, Jimmy Carr, I haven't watched everything he's done, but... In all that I have seen him do, he says many, many extremely offensive things, but it's always in the form of a joke. He never just says something really hateful without making it a joke at all. And, I'm, you know, it's not for everyone. Some people don't like offensive comedy, period. And in that case, he's definitely not for you. And I'm not trying to convince you otherwise. But several times in this movie, it does just, it just has someone say something offensive and it's like, see that, I, I think there might be a language barrier because it seems like it's trying to be a joke, but it's not really a joke, you know, yeah. And yeah, so... Let's see, the best thing about the movie, the, the little bit of the movie that really is legitimately scary and like edge of your seat kind of stuff, and when it's effectively funny and yeah, the, the ending for example, yeah. And yeah. The worst aspect is basically how bad everything else is. And yeah, let's see. I was most, before watching it, I was most worried that it might be one of the boring bad movies. There are quite a few of them. And unfortunately, a lot of the time it is kind of just average. And, yeah, so I would say, let's see, the, the recommendation. I think if you, you know, the elevator pitch, as it were, of an elevator in a skyscraper is killing people. If that's, you know, basically your level of excitement at hearing that pitch is how interested you should be in the movie with the realization that it's nowhere near as fun as it should be. I, again, I would love to say that this is like Piranha 3D. I, I have only watched Piranha 3D once. And that movie, let's see, was that 10 years ago, maybe? I still remember a lot of it. And from what I remember, there is nothing in there where I was like, I don't know, I feel like they could have changed that. Everything in it worked for what it was trying to do. You know, it's not for everyone, but if you like cheesy, you know, it, it's basically, it's kind of that Piranha 3D, I swear I'm not going to, go off on a tangent, I'm going to keep it brief. Piranha 3D, you can think of Piranha 3D as South Park Bigger, Longer, and Untouch. They made the movie that people expected, It you know, when, when Matt, 
Stone and Trey Parker made a South Park movie, they knew a lot of people, even without seeing it, they're going to be sure that it's just nonstop, you know, violence and swearing and gross, you know. So inside that movie, inside the South Park movie, they have the Terrence and Philip movie, which is the exact thing that people thought the South Park movie would be. And then when the kids of South Park watch the movie, they start, you know, behaving really bratty, which is exactly what parents figured their children would do if they watched the South Park movie. And that's kind of what Piranha 3D is. It's the movie that the, you know, the people who want to ban horror movies for having too much violence, gore, sex, swearing, and how, and for how much of it is gratuitous, Piranha 3D is the movie that they think the, the most horror movies are, you know, people who've never watched a horror, a horror movie, but hate horror movies based on their reputation, Piranha 3D is the movie that they think all horror movies are, and that's kind of brilliant, you know, that's the, the fact that there is at least one movie out there that is exactly 100% the, the, that kind, you know, the, the, the thing that, the, you know, yeah. And I, I think this movie could have been, not, not quite as, I'm sure that movie had a bigger budget. I'm not saying it could have, you know, but this movie should have been, should have taken a page out of that book, even though that book wouldn't be written for about 10 years, but I think you understand what I'm saying. So, yeah. Honestly, you know, let's see. How many literal express elevators to hell do I rate this? You know, I've, I've said a lot of negative things about this movie. I can't really lie about its quality. Honestly, I'm giving this movie a 10 out of 100. It is garbage. No, I'm kidding. A 5 out of 10. And that brings us to the spoiler section. With the first section entitled Disclaimers. This is the thoughts sections starting. If you don't care about these disclaimers, Disclaimers, I try to keep them short and round, but the mileage may vary. You can skip right ahead to the section of your choice in the description box. I often try to talk very fast during disclaimers since a lot of it is very standard information. I'm not going to keep speaking as fast as I sometimes do during this section once I get into the video itself. With that said, please do note that some of the specific discussion of the movie may be in this section. I realize the video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. So yeah, from here on out, spoilers. No more warnings unless I spoil something other than this movie. In which case I'll warn, hold up an index finger, you get the drill. As my dentist told me when he realized how bad the condition now nah, I'm just kidding. So let's see the yeah, since we are still dealing with corona, I wanna say during this video, you know, yeah, I already have touched my face some. It's possible I'll do it more. I want to assure you, I washed my hands carefully since the last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again carefully before going back out. And let's see. Yeah, so content and or trigger warning. I'm going to be discussing the potentially triggering content content of this movie, allusion to miscarrying a pregnancy, on-screen death of an animal, and it's innocent unlike, say, the shark in a shark movie. Not that sharks in real life or anyway, don't hate sharks in real life. They they really haven't it's a misunderstanding. Anyway, death of uh, potential death of children, I guess. Ultimately no children actually do die. There's just brief yeah, we, we briefly think that it might happen. Now, I don't have a problem with the violence of Corn General. I think it was one of my favorite horror movies, movies in general. I also love Cronenberg's The Fly Video Drum, etc. Personally, I don't think it's wrong to put violence in fiction, except for the following exceptions. If it could encourage xenophobia, and if it could make people think that violence is a solution, there are almost no problems that it solves in real life. I would be very surprised if you watch this movie and you take away from it 
that violence would solve your problem. You know, if you ever come upon a an elevator with a with a mind of its own, in that case, it is fair to blow up the mind in order to completely kill it all. Actually, honestly, the movie kind of makes fun of people who go for violence, doesn't it? I mean, let's see, you have the... So yeah, the, the elevator guys are ex-marines, and one of them ends up... You know, well, I guess, I don't know if it's a fight. He gets punched, and then he basically stays down while the other guy walks away. Honestly, I don't even remember. Was he punched more than once? I'm not sure if he was. I it was it was one of the many bowling scenes in the movie, so you know, but there's that. There's the uh what's it called? The SWAT team there at the end who are like you know, they they're way more worried about like Jennifer and Mark than they are the elevator itself. Like they they you know, they're not careful enough about the elevator. Yeah, I, th I think the movie is kind of making fun of people who think that violence solves problems. And let's see, I don't have a problem with film sexuality, nudity, disturbing, and upsetting material in general. Most of one of my favorite movies. Let's see. I might swear in this movie. In this video, sorry. Since they do in the movie, that's why I said movie. Yep. Yeah. I got this movie on sale, so anything negative is saying this is not out of bitterness. I also not feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. It's not that I'm upset at how it compares to other, you know, other horror comedies. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. Honestly, I hope I I don't know if Dick Miles is still getting to direct a lot of movies, but clearly he has a devoted fan base. Looks like the movies he made in Holland are really, really good. I hope he gets to, you know, make as many of these as he wants to. And, yeah, I don't have some personal vendetta against him. I already said that. To the best of my ability, the negative things I send this are fair criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what it was trying to achieve, etc. And, So yeah, the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of it is analysis, some of it is MST Radio riff tracks and other jokes, etc. Especially jokes in the first section. And, or, yeah. The first of these, of the thoughts sections. Time codes for those sections are in the description box. And, yeah. So the very next section is thoughts on how while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary or live tweeting of the like. And the second section is thoughts that I had before watching. And the final section, I get into stuff I think it's worthwhile to get into on Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, IMDb, and Wikipedia. Now, let's see. Does the movie appear to have empathy for the least likable characters? Not really, no. And I think they made the right choice on that. I mean, let's see. The the probably the most despicable character is Gunter. And he let's see. Right now, I don't even remember. Oh, right, he ended up getting getting hanged. Yeah, I was about to say I didn't remember what even happened to him, but yeah, he the the they things swept down around him and pulled him up, and then he came back down, and he'd been hanged by his own creation, which does also really say that you know his own creation hated him, didn't want to be what it was. So and. Yeah, I think, you know, and we also never have empathy for the, 
you know, yeah, the movie and the audience never have empathy for the elevator itself, which, by the end of the movie, we have pretty much, yeah, by the end of the movie, we know it is a living thing, you know, and it's in pain, but that pain is going to roll across the earth, and yeah. Now, let's see, yeah, the movie doesn't have that high an opinion of women. It's, it's fairly typical, like, horror movie, you know, American horror movie kind of thing, you know. So, Jennifer is, you know, a pretty scummy, sleazy reporter who will literally break the law just to get a story and marks let's see what were they even they weren't even broken up were they i don't think they were uh, like he he shows up and he's like i'm sorry about last night so they had a fight and the very next day she's sleeping with someone yeah so that's a that's a thing and let's see the um, I guess the, the hairdresser, you know, whether or not you like her is whether or not you think that she, you know, whether or not you like that she got revenge on the pervert by dying in Sarah Green. And let's see, who does that leave? I feel like there's, yeah, the widow is basically a walking punchline. And then you have the, the two prostitutes at the very start who literally are just there for, for sex appeal. So, yeah, the movie does not have a very high opinion of women and is very typical for American, you know, American released, uh, American produced horror movies. Thankfully, there are some that do better. Now, it is important in horror to not overexpose the threat. I mean, the movie, it's the elevator, so it's not like it can just go missing. You know, the, like, it doesn't, it can't just hide for a while off camera. When, whenever we see an elevator, it's, yeah. So... I guess what you might say is, are those scenes spaced out enough? I think so, but I don't think that was necessary, because, yeah, it's gonna... Sorry, that was not a spoiler warning. I'm not saying that this movie would be... The movie would be better if you trimmed down the scenes between the elevator attacks. I think it just needed... At least they should have... It's not necessarily that there needed to be less space between the attacks. It's that what they put in the space between the attacks a lot of the time is bad. If it was just something good, again, like Piranha 3D, I'm not going to be spoiling it, but from what I remember, it's not like constant. Like maybe there's a chunk of the movie where it's almost constant violence, but it's not like from the very start to the very end, constant violence. Now, let's see. If you love this movie, I'm not trying to spoil the movie for you. I'm uh, uh, ruin your enjoyment of it. Now, I first watched this in the year 2010 or possibly earlier. Definitely watched it by then. You know, I, I wasn't writing reviews before 2003, so it's possible that I watched it 2002. No, I, I think I only watched it in 2010. And since then, I don't think I've watched You know, I've watched it twice total now. Once in 2010 and once, you know, right before I hit record. Well, not right before, but er earlier today, not very many hours ago. Try to have it fresh in my mind when I do a video. 
my making jokes on this should not necessarily be taken taken as me making light of the subject. I simply find it very difficult not to MST3K and overanalyze everything I watch. And that was it for that section. Memphis. Two notes taken while watching. There we go. I got that eventually. And yeah, so the uh, yeah. Two of the guards, at there at the start, are watching prostitutes, and we realize that the guys in the control room knew that the guys were watching prostitutes. And they, you know, he says, oh, it's Thursday. Maybe he's, wait, is that, is it supposed to be that he's just saying, oh, you know, whatever, nothing new here, or is he literally saying, Every Thursday, this happens. Cause, yeah, I think, yeah. I think the idea is supposed to be. But the way that the line was delivered, it sounded like he meant, you know, every Thursday night, this happens. Just, yeah. I guess I'm not supposed to really think about that. Just supposed to accept the line is funny, which they could have made a lot easier. It wasn't kind of weird. And, um, you know, we see that lightning strikes the, the top of the elevator, so that's why it starts. You know, the, not every horror movie, not, not every piece of horror fiction needs this, but it is good if you can point to this is the thing that start. you know, why wasn't it already happening? Why wasn't it always happening? Because it needed electricity, you know, th that's, that's the classic, you know, like, the original... Frankenstein movie. I don't know if it was even the first. I think it might be. Lightning was required to bring to life the the creature, and that's what happens here. And the guard's electrical digital watch and his flashlight start going crazy, and then the elevator starts acting weird with the doors closing. And yeah, with the with the guards, we meet the first of many characters in this movie who are going to spend most of their time arguing over nothing important. Like, I think there's some chance that when writing the scene of them on the observation deck arguing over who was going to get to watch, how many quarters were left, and, and the thing with, you know... Oh, she's taking off her panties. There's two. Two panties? No, not two panties. The, the... Why couldn't they just... If they just made it funny... Like, there's a, there's some arguing over basically nothing in Jason X. From what I remember, it tended to be funny. Like, the, there's this brief exchange during that movie. Is it a spoiler? I, okay, I guess, technically. Spoilers for Jason X. Two of the, two of the guys with guns, like, you know, the... One of them's a young woman, the other's a young guy, and the young guy is like, you know, something. The young, the young woman jump scares him. You know, they're, they're maybe in their 20s or something. And he, like, screams, and it's a jump scare for the audience as well. And then, you know, she says, you know what? What? You scream like a girl. Screw you. You wish. It's not... King Lear, it's not Shakespeare, but it's a little funny. And in this movie, it's just rarely all that funny. Like, just off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that you really lose 
if Mark didn't just lose his girlfriend at the start of the movie, and if you remove all the parts where he's sitting and talking to the other guy in the in the diner, and like the the yeah, like there's just there's scene after scene of this of just people arguing over nothing important, and the the yeah, it it's I get that the movie couldn't be constant wall-to-wall -wall elevator killing action but they didn't have to make it this obnoxious what was in between the the yeah now let's see my ass is on the line for you the straight white line in the middle of the road is the worst place to put your ass and we see the millennium building during the day and some great panning and tracking in the one shot you know, establishes there are many different people who uses the building during a short amount of time. And we, the audience, already know that the elevator, or at least one of the elevators, is behaving weirdly. So that does kind of tell you, you know, things are going to go bad soon. You know, so that's, that's legitimate. If there's a fan edit of this out there, I'd like to see it. Because there's a good movie here. It just, or, or maybe half of a good movie. If you remove everything bad from this movie, I think you'd have half of a movie, and it would be pretty decent, you know? And maybe you couldn't put that in theaters, but just, yeah. Anyway. If I'm not pregnant, this must be one hell of a tumor. It's not a tumor! Those poor women in the middle of nowhere stuck. That's decent foreshadowing. So they kind of wanted one of the guards in the control room to have multiple lines, but they couldn't think of anything for him to talk about other than the fact that his wife is on that elevator, so he says it like three times. Like, literally, okay, maybe I'm completely misremembering from what I recall. He's, you know, like one of the others is like, it's, it's safe. And then he says, but my wife is on that elevator. And then one of the others says, no, look, they just checked it. I'm sure it's fine. Look, it's lighting up. It's lighting up. It's not lighting up. Whatever. But my wife is on that elevator. Are you sure? My wife is on that elevator. You just... We get it. Just... Make it easier. Put put it on, like... You know, you know how some people have, like, a... You know, hi, my name is, like, sign on their shirt. Just make a sign that says, hi, my wife is on that elevator. And you can just... Point to it each time instead. After we cut the power. What do you mean you cut the power? You're not xenomorphs. We certainly did make sure we got a lot of close-ups on that dog before it, before we see it die. It's determined to make it as tasteless as absolutely possible. And yeah, Mark calls his wife and it's like, Could we forget about the things I said last night when I was drunk? I didn't mean to call you that. If there's an emergency at the job tomorrow, they call us. I don't want you to show up drunk for work, which is why I started talking to you about this now, after you clearly have already gotten really drunk. The guard with his head stuck in the elevator is a pretty, pretty decent, tense, and suspenseful bit. And Dan Hedaya is, like, cutting his, his cigar and starts saying, I hate elevators. I try to control my temper, I rarely succeed, and I have seven more rules. I'm not an ex expert on behavior. Do I look like a behavioral elevatologist? And then the elevator repairman throws up, so we get two vomit scenes in maybe three minutes. Just because you do something that's kind of gross doesn't make it funny or scary. Just anyway. And Jennifer wanted to get into a restricted area, so she put on an outfit that would make it look like she belonged where she was going, which really just makes me wish I was playing Hitman right now. Nothing's wrong with the computer. Did you check everything twice? I perform over 3,000 mega checks per second.
You arranged all this shit just because I complained about how boring the job was yesterday. You think your best friend for years murdered two people to teach you not to complain about your job being boring? Like, I literally, like, who even writes that? How do you direct that? How do you, how do you read that and still do the movie? Because he did, they did, somehow, they managed to. I, I just, I, I think I need to know how, so the problem can be quantified. Because it's like, I, th I feel like this should get it, like, a, a specific sticker on the, you know, you, you've got, like, studio logo, age rating, this movie has complete nonsense being spoken by human beings as if it weren't nonsense. That's, that's all I'm asking for. After the break, tell, you know, we'll tell, talk all about why, you know, after the elevator, and about the elevator, and about why you still miss your father. See, that's kind of funny. That's a pretty good parody of American talk shows. Are those your words? Maybe. I say so much stupid shit I lose track. This is ridiculous. I'm a suspect. I got stupider. I didn't think it was humanly possible, but it got stupider. I thought that him suggesting that his best friend killed several people just to teach him a lesson was as stupid as it was going to get. But it gets stupider. He's now a suspect. So Kowalski died from a gunshot, a fire, and drowning in his car? Who is he? Rasputin? So one of the rollerbladers is in front of one of the elevators, it opens, sucks him in, flies up through the, and then spits him back out and he flies over. Splat. Not gonna lie, that was legitimately kind of funny. I just wrote down what you told me. You mean you quoted him? Is that what you're trying to say? I, I'm, I'm sorry, but it sounds like it was written by someone who, you know, who who maybe has English as a second, like maybe maybe in Dutch it makes sense to say, I wrote down what you told me, but and I'm sorry, but someone who's grown up with American English as their language, she's a reporter. Of course she's just going to say, I quoted you. She's not going to say, I wrote down what you told me. Anyway, I, it just, it reminds me of how, like, in the first Silent Hill, the, you know, in, in the school, the map says teacher's room instead of faculty lounge. I'm not blaming, you know, the, the excuse me, the Japanese writers for Silent Hill. Of, if you don't know that it's called a faculty lounge, you would never guess. You know, teacher's room makes sense, but faculty lounge, you know, if, if you don't know that that's what it's called, you're you're not going to be able to guess that, that that's what it you know why is it a lounge anyway ugh, I don't know I I guess it's not completely nonsensical that it's a lounge but it's just a, a lounge in a school is it's not the first thing you would think let's see and in some in some languages if you literally translate what it's called into English it would come out as teacher's room. Every single time I see, let's see, what's his name, Edward something in this movie, I just I just want him to talk about how much he loves trains. For sure, the the you know Ilsa, the constantly swearing daycare woman, this is okay. It's decently funny. One of you bastards seen Mary Jane? You had one job, lady. And Mary Jane gets the humor of the situation, the elevator closing its doors. When she, like, you know, she's, she presses the button over here, and then the door opens over here. So she runs over here, and then it closes, and then it opens over here. And she's like, she, she can appreciate how funny that is. It kind of reminds me of in Sarah Connor Chronicles when 
when the little girl plays with lights in a similar, uh, yeah, so as to not spoil, yeah, that's vague enough that you, if you, if you've seen it, you know what I mean, but if you haven't, it's not spoiling anything. And it really is perfect that her name is El Il Ilsa, or, yeah, I think they specifically call her Ilsa. Uh, yeah, voice typed Elsa, but Ilsa. Just, yeah. And the elevator messed up the, the Mary Jane doll. Did they lip... There's only one child whose name we hear, and they named her Marijuana. See, sometimes this movie understands that it's how to do comedy. That's kind of funny. You know, there's, there's like, I don't know, six-year-old girl and her name's Marijuana. Yeah, that's... Wow. And I like the detail that when Ilsa is talking to the boss, she's very polite. And then when she gets out of earshot of the, you know... I, yeah, as, you know, she walks away from the boss and then she's like, what were you doing, little bastard? Or something like that. The moment that the boss can't hear. It, you know, it's not that she had, had a come to Jesus moment. Now she's never going to swear. It's just that she knows not to swear in front of the boss. Can we use your VCR? You see, kids, VCRs are kind of like old-time DVD players. Yeah, Jen and Mark watch the tape and talk about how quickly the elevator moved. I would also like to briefly note that this is an elevator that can travel at extremely high speeds up and down. It can create a perfect vacuum to suck someone in and then reverse it to powerfully shoot them out of the... and and. And when the elevator doors open, there's like this blinding white, bright light. Like we saw, he, he had to like hold up his hand and, and we briefly see, it's like, again, like, I, it's almost funny. Like, it, is, is it supposed to be like, you know, well, I hope you were ready for the, the light down the end of the tunnel because it's here for you. Yeah. But yeah, you know, why isn't more of the movie this fun and ridiculous? Trouble? What trouble? The kind of trouble where you have a talking to by your boss, where you move your job position, where you end up a murder suspect? I don't know. I guess some kind of trouble like that? Like, were these written out of order? Like, when they wrote that line, did they not know the kind of shit that he was going to have gone through by that point? Like, he literally just said, I can't believe I'm a murder suspect. Now he's like, what kind of trouble are you talking? I, I, don't, think, I don't think we're going to get in any kind of trouble here. Maybe he thinks that he can't get in more trouble, but he can. Yeah, you know, the some of the plot of Jen and Mark, you know, gradually uncovering the mis mystery isn't too bad. I do think it should have started sooner. You know, the movie wasn't really interesting before, it's other than the murders. They could easily have started after the very first weird occurrence. You know, after we see the first death. Actually, yeah, if, you know, again, I realized that the the ring was made after this and is an infinitely better movie, but imagine if right away, like if as soon as, let's see, what is the first? Um, hmm. Actually, I guess, do they start? Well, let's see, the, the rollerblader, that wasn't the first death, was it? I think the first death was the, the guy who's 
Yeah, the guard whose head got caught. You know, imagine if as soon as that happened, the 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 whole elevator. Maybe if the first time we see Jen, she's already looking into this kind of thing, and you could have like scenes of her, like as it is, there's one scene in the movie of her watching back security footage. You know, if she, I think they could have maybe one more scene of that, or maybe a scene where she's told. Yeah, like let's see, let's say that she knows someone who works in the building, and like he, you know, he, yeah, you could, you could have a scene of like, she, you know, she calls him and asks, and he's like, okay, fine, I know I owe you one, Jen, for, I'll watch the footage, and I'll let you know, okay, but this is the last time, and he hangs up, and then he sits down and, and presses, and we don't see what he sees, we just see his horrified face, you know, and then, like, yeah, either, maybe, maybe he ends up dead before he gives her the information, or maybe he can... Or, or ends up catatonic or something, but just too much of the movie isn't about the investigation, you know, and, and, you know, some people have pointed out, we have so many scenes of elevator repairmen checking the elevator and saying, can't find anything wrong, and then they leave, and then another death, and then we start over, and we, the audience, know, because we, we see it from right away. We see the lightning strike and we see the elevator start acting weird. So it there really shouldn't be any, you know, we the audience are just waiting for the characters to catch up. You know, we know that something weird is going on. Once they, real, once they finally accept that something weird is going on, then they can get more of the explanation, which is what we're waiting for. They could, I, I get that. If they explain it too early, then there's, well, you know, there's no mystery for the rest of the movie. I'm not saying they should explain it earlier. I'm saying they should start moving towards it earlier. And again, if you've seen the American remake of The Ring, I know I need to watch the original. I will at some point. Don't at me. You can't because I don't have Twitter. But the in that movie, I'm, don't get me wrong, hugely different movie, hugely it's it's psychological horror and there's not there there are a lot of differences between them but that movie from basically right away like there's a i'm not going to spoil anything but there's an inciting incident right at the in the, in the first few minutes of the movie and then the rest of you know and from then on and onwards Naomi Watts is tracking down the truth she's looking at clues and you know, yeah, if they, if they did something like that, honestly, I think she should have been the protagonist. Mark is not that compelling, and he's really only interesting in that he's able to help her get closer so that they can figure out exactly what... I, I think she should have been the lead. And... They were making computers based on dolphin brains, or something like that. That is legitimately an absolutely amazing line. Let's see. Yeah, and Jen and Mark. What does that say? Oh, right, they say goodnight, and then, yeah, and the, the next morning, we see this panning shot in front of the Millennium Building, panning all the way up to really get across how big it is. Right in front of it, there's this, like, you know, stone or metal angel, and it's holding, like, the, the wings up, and there's these tips. I really think something should get impaled on the sharp wing tips before the end of the movie. Maybe that should have been what happened to the rollerblade, or he should have ended up impaled like that. We can't do this, Jennifer, he says, as he continues doing it. I get it, I get. He's hoping that she'll stop doing it. But since she uh, keeps doing it, he's going to go with, so she'll say, so she's safe. But he only says it once. Like, it's, it, I think we see his face during it, so it's not an ADR line. But honestly, I would have almost guessed that, like, they, you know, they were, they were editing it and they were like, 
they are very eager to break into a house. They, they know someone lives in there. She might be at home. You know, should we maybe have him, like, say, we can't do this? And I said, yeah. And Kowalski's widow is legitimately effective in communicating the horror of the elevator. Of course, when she starts spinning around and around, it's essentially a parody, but it works for the movie. You know, it, it legitimately... I, she should have been in more of the movie, even if the that wasn't actually the answer. You know, that's, yeah, I'm torn. On one hand, I really like that scene because it's so much fun. It, you know, at times it's scary, at times it's hilarious, but it just... But it does also, like, I think the ending is supposed to be the, the, fi the, the final answer appears to be the, the human brain matter thing. Uh, yeah, something like that. But it is a really fun scene, and I, I think she should have been in, in more of the, of the movie. She really... Every single second that she was on screen, it was pitch perfect. And the bit with all the people falling out of the elevator when the floor gives out is effective. You know, some of the time it's, like, scary and, like, wow, and, and some of the time it's kind of funny. When Gunther Steinberg talks about how his invention can change things for humanity, I like the detail that he doesn't say we, he says they. You know, he, he doesn't consider himself as part of humanity. He is, you know, d distinct from humanity. So, with, you know, he, he has like a... Uh, what's that complex called? He, he thinks he's a messiah complex, maybe? It's, you know, he thinks he's separate from human beings. And, yeah, like, like other reviews, I have to wonder why the movie seems to be equally into the idea of it being Kowalski's ghost. The dolphin brain... Or, yeah, not sorry, not the dolphin brain. It's, it's, yeah. When that... When, when the... When the when I voice typed that, I remembered it as being dolphin brain, but it ended up being human brain. I don't know that I would have hated it turning... No, the human brain is funnier. Let's see. Yeah, the president's speech is an hour and 18 minutes in, so, you know, what is that, 20? Yeah, I think it's, there's 20 minutes left of the movie before the, the climax is done. Possibly a little more. I, I feel like that is... They, they are pretty... It is 20 effective minutes, though. Yeah. So now Jennifer's the one who's uncomfortable with what they're doing after dressing up and breaking into an apartment. It's just, like, why is... Only now, they're not using dolphins anymore. The machine is not a machine anymore. I mean, I guess it's a decent way to slow down the protagonist, that the guy is a murder suspect who they might lie about. Since they realize they, they did lie about his partner, and Jen is an investigative reporter, and as such, they wouldn't let her in. You know, she, do, she doesn't belong at all. But yeah, I mean, yeah, so basically the idea is that Gunter, would, you know, he kept doing these research experiments, and so he, he did them on these elevators. I guess to save money to to improve the improve elevators for all elevators and you know like testing it so that all elevators in the future would do that I don't know and the, the you know Ron Perlman the elevator you know he owns the company of the elevator and yeah that repair install and repair elevators and they knew that. I don't even remember his name, but the other elevator repair guy. Let's see. Yeah, anyway, the, the, the other elevator repair guy gets partnered up with Gunter. 
and that ends with the the what's it called? Ba basically, Gunter fakes that guy's suicide, and then they pin the crimes on him, so that the you know that that way they can keep you know obviously if people find out that the the people who run this elevator company are okay with these ridiculous experiments you know unethical experiments since they're using human tissue that you know the, that might end the company but if they hired one guy who did something wrong you know that's that's a that's a smaller problem so the elevator mechanic so, so Mark got in by attaching himself under one of the cars, Cape Fear style. I'm not even 100% sure how he got out of the van without being found. Again, why is the movie not this amazing all the time? That's legit. That's a plot point, you realize. That is something that if you were retelling the plot to someone and you were trying to not, you know, trying to not dwell on the ridiculous, you're like, okay, so... Jennifer gets arrested. Mark ends up getting... Wait, wait, wait. If Jennifer gets arrested, how did Mark get... We don't see it, but somehow he snuck out of the car that they declared cleared, and then he attached himself under another car. It's just... It's like... It's amazing. And I, I'm sorry, I can't... I have to just point out that at one point, one of the one of the SWAT people, you know, speaking of Jennifer, say, "Lock her up," and that's, yeah, that's that's. They didn't know when they when when they were making this movie, they didn't know how that that phrase would be. Yeah, let's. I know the movie is saying that Jen is being locked up because she stole the van and impersonated an elevator with her person, but I like to think that she's actually being held on multiple counts of ter terrible dialogue and inconsistent characterization. And the stabbing of the brain of the elevator and the electrical effects on it, and the bursting into flames, gloriously cheesy. Again, why isn't more of the movie like this? Naomi Watts did not get as high up on the skyscraper as she had hoped, and she's like, where is King Kong when you need him? Mark running around with the stinger does look appropriately ridiculous. Like, he looks like a child who's running around with their parents, you know, trying to play pretend, but they actually got one of their parents, like, like a briefcase, you know, they're, they're playing it. I'm an important office, you know, I'm an important office worker. And meanwhile, they're, they're carrying their actual parents' briefcase, so it looks way too big for them. I really would have thought Michael Ironside had learned not to get into physical fights in your elevators by now. What are you doing? I've got him covered. She seriously thought that he was going to fire a Stinger missile at Gunter from that distance. That's amazing. Wow. Like, she's like, what? I, I got this gun. I'm not going to let him just leave this to me. I'm going to I'm gonna fire a stinger missile at him. I mean, are they, like, a single meter apart? Maybe? Wow. And both Gunter and Mark gra are grabbed by these whip-like tentacles from the elevator, but Mark manages to, you know, that's, I, I, I do think that is legitimately a, a nice, fun way to end it, you know, it wraps around his leg, so he's, like, standing, he's got the, the stinger, and it wraps, like, and pulls him out, but as it's pulling him, you know, he manages to get the stinger, and, you know, it's, yeah, that's, I'm not saying every movie should end with that with, with something that ridiculous and gloriously just but I do think a fair argument could be made that 
a, a good solid chunk, maybe the majority of movies should end like that. I do like that, you know, tons of horror movies have the brief final scare. You know, I, I like that the, the you know, it, it basically does make sense that Mark would do that to, to like, flirt with Jen. That, that 100%, yeah. And the end credits play over Love in an Elevator, excuse me, by Aerosmith, which, yeah. Of course. What else? Yeah, so the movie is an hour and 42 minutes long without end credits, and 47 with them, and yeah, it's way too long. There's a lot you could easily cut. And that brings us to the next. section entitled notes taken before watching so let's see the yeah that yeah so like I said earlier in this video, I don't tend to have a problem with violence in the gore movies. I'm glad that ultimately the pregnant women do not end up miscarrying, but it is a very tasteless smash cut from them in distress to the eggs frying on the pan, where for a second or so you think you're watching like miscarriages or and I I read at least one 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 review that I got to via the IMDB external reviews section that said that there are actual miscarriages. I'm not sure that that's. I I don't know. I it I actually yeah I guess it's possible we don't get quite enough information to say for sure, but definitely like you're told that it's extremely hot, and the the women you know you see one of them you see like the head starting to to put you don't see the head literally. But you see, like, her dress, like, there's a bulge out where the head would come out. And then it cuts to the, the you know, the people opening the elevator, and they're like, <gasps> and then you see, you know, within, like, a few seconds, you realize, no, 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 what you're seeing is a literal, like, egg on a, a pan. But for, for, like, a second or two, you think that you're seeing, like, a... a fetus, like, have, you know, ba basically, like, ah, steam coming from it because it got so hot in there or something. And yeah, so, I already talked about, you know, others have pointed out that the movie has a weakness in that it's a near constant cycle of the elevator killing someone, an investigation, the character's not knowing for sure what's going on, even though the audience does, and back to kill elevator killing someone, and rinse and repeat. I think it might have been wiser for them to go the route of quite a few slasher movies, I'm not gonna spoil exactly which ones here, where basically no one realizes that there's something killing a lot of people out there, until the last 10 or 15 minutes, at which point then there's a fight between the survivors and the killer, it's, it's pointless to have so many investigations when they're not going to lead to the answer discovered by the characters until the last investigation. And this could work especially well if, at first, we don't know how the elevator is disposing of the bodies. So we sit there expecting the bodies to be found, but then the bodies aren't there. And maybe we almost start wondering if the other scene actually happened, if it was someone's dream sequence or something. And then near the end, we see how it's been disposing of the bodies, so it all comes together. I don't know that they necessarily would have to change the ending from what it actually is. And before you say that that kind of thing is ridiculous, you can't tell me that it's any more ridiculous than the stuff that's already in the movie. But 
see. And and real quick, you know, when I voice typed that before rewatching the movie, so I had forgotten that there are people watching the the elevator in in the control room. I don't think that it would be a huge problem. Let's see. The yeah, so the they are in the room. I forget. They don't actually have cameras inside the elevators. I, I don't think so, no. They have elevators on many of the floors that show, you know, people entering or, you know, entering or leaving elevators and such. And I just feel like the, the, let's see. Yeah, and, and maybe the, you know, by the end of the movie, you know, someone brings up, well, how, how could you not see that the elevators were doing weird stuff? And they realize the elevator is sending the wrong signal to the control room. The elevator knows that it's being watched and it's hiding the, because that's, you know, many, many slasher killers hide from most of the people during most of the movie. You know, or if they get spotted, they immediately kill the person. And, yeah, it just... I, I think the movie would have been a lot better if if that had... You could still have had, like, offensive humor and all this stuff. Now, and, yeah, if you very badly want an investigation plotline, you know, you could have Jennifer investigating the strange disappearances and maybe... You know, she off-screen talks to a bunch of other people who could be involved with the disappearance, and she talks to Mark, since the people might not have disappeared in... Yeah, you know... Yeah, she talks to Mark since the, the people might have disappeared in the elevator, and then you can have them not find anything wrong with the elevator once, just like they do, you know... Yeah, she gets Mark to check the elevator once, and, like, yeah, you have one check, and then, like, he, he comes away from the check saying, well, everything's checking out fine, so that's what I'm going to write on the report. But then, like, he and Jen talk, and she points out, but what about the something-something? And he's like, oh, my God, the something-something was something-something. We have to stop, the, you know, some kind of... But I, I lost count. I don't know, three or four times they, they say, oh, the elevator seems fine. It just, okay, it might not be quite that many, but yeah, there's definitely too much of the, let's see, and yeah, so the, yeah, I try to find a lot of YouTube videos in order to, you know, to, to have a lot to talk about in these videos. So I, I did a bunch of YouTube searches for both, for Down and The Shaft, and the only thing I could find was a trailer. But to be fair, it's a, it's a quite good trailer. Yeah, actually, yeah, never mind. Two, tra two different trailers, but they're, they're, they're mostly the same. They're, they're the same in a number of ways, but yeah. I'm just briefly going to quote, In a city that never sleeps, something has awakened. And it, of course, shows parts of several of the main scare scenes and death scenes. And and one of the parts, no, nobody actually reads this aloud, but it's like text flying at the camera. Your next stop is hell. And that's just, yeah. They understood exactly the kind of movie they were marketing. And... Yeah, the other one, the tagline is slightly different and shows a clip from one of the pregnant women in the elevator and, and has the line that he said, you know, Mark says, ten people get on, nine people get off. Which, it, I mean, that's, that's like, uh, ah, crap, what's it called? Thunder Dome Rules? I, in, in which case, there is entirely too little Tina Turner. In this movie, but then again, that movie has entirely too much. To, I'm I'm told I haven't watched it. Maybe I will at some point. I have no problem with Cena Turner. She's very talented. 
And the, the DVD, the, the cover, it's, again, it's not that I'm, like, hugely bitter or something, but the cover did promise a trailer. There is literally nothing, on, like, the, the, I, you, you know, you, you have the, you have the menu for, what's it called? The, the scene selection, and you have, you know, you can choose between four different language subtitles, but that's it. That's the only thing that's on, you know. I don't even think it has more than one menu design. I think it's all the same background, and it's a static background. It's, yeah, very underwhelming DVD release. But I am told there's, I, th I think it was like a Blu-ray release or something that was actually, that sounded like a very, a much more impressive anyway, final section, critics sites, MDB, and Wikipedia. But yeah, I don't have that Blu-ray and I cannot possibly comment on the content, obviously. So, I've, I've never seen, I've never watched those special features. So, I am, if, if you badly want to know some of the, you know, if you go onto the IMDb page for this movie, a number of the exterior, uh, a number of the reviews that you find, if you go to the section that's called exterior review, external reviews, sorry, some of those do talk about the, the special features. And yeah, so I'm just, yeah, this is, this is one of the, I think, yeah, this is a, a professional critic. If you paid to see this flick, I think it's fair to say you got the shaft. Did this really happen? Not the worst movie I've ever seen. Mediocre horror film that offers nothing special. Sadly, that is kind of true of the, the overall. Yeah, so I'm going to try to avoid leaving too much dead air as I skim through. Okay, I noted 113 things I want to comment on. I'm probably not going to do all of them. The film definitely has an occasionally fun 70s or 80s B4 charm to it, truth be told. And, you know, the, this person notes... It's from 2001, but it feels like a dusty 20-year-old film. Yeah, very well put. That's that's very... Okay, and... Yeah, and the, the actual tagline is, Your next stop is hell. And apparently, in real life, Naomi Watts is afraid of elevators. And, it doesn't, that, so that's from the IMDb trivia section. It doesn't say if she were before she made this movie. I, I think we're supposed to assume that, but, and it, there's also, there's some chance that what she's mostly afraid of is making bad movies about elevators, but, you know, no, seriously, that is really cool. I, I th it's, it's really, really cool when, when a, an actor takes a job where the, the thing that they're filming is something that scares them in real life. Like, you know, that, that, I seriously do respect that. That's very, that's badass. And, let's see. The third movie in four years to feature both Dan Hedaya and Ron Perlman. The first and second were Alien Resurrection and the Second Civil War. Oh, that's right. There is a movie in 1997 called The Second Civil War. I don't know how they guessed that. I mean, I guess technically it hasn't started yet, but I'm pretty sure America is about to in, 
you know, get into a second civil war. Director Dick Moss later said that the movie didn't work because he didn't get along on set with actor James Marshall. Moss didn't want Marshall to take the movie too seriously, but most of the time, Marshall didn't listen to his directions. I think it could have been stronger if he had been more willing to not take it too seriously. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a that's a that's a thing in this movie. He's taking the movie too seriously, and that is a mistake. And and Maz himself gets that it's not serious. So there's only three quotes, which really tells me that most of the people writing down quotes for this movie just wanted to get, you know, just wanted to move on to something else. Because it definitely has more than three memorable quotes. But, yeah, so I'm just briefly going to read the, the, yeah, Ron Perlman says, we live in a vertical world. If you can't trust the elevators, what the fuck can you trust? Or wait, is that that? Anyway, it's it's one of the name actors. I'm pretty sure. And when, yeah, this only says the Jennifer Evans line, but in case you've forgotten, I think it bears. I'll I will I will just briefly set up. She says this in response to the 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 guy giving her stories. It tells her, you don't come back here. Until you bring me a really juicy story. And she was, you know, yeah. And he turns away and she, yeah, she, she's not really talking to him. But she, like, in response to that, she says, I'll pee on them. And I'd like to note that that line is spoken by Naomi Watts, 59 award winning, 93 award nominated Naomi Watts. Before she was famous, but that is still, that you know, I've, I've seen some joke. She probably keeps it off her resume. I have to imagine that it's a language barrier thing. Maybe in Dutch, the the exchange, bring me back a juicy story, I'll pee on them, makes sense. But in English, I have no idea. Like, juicy, like like you think of, like, like steak or, you know, the... Pee on them? What? I I get yeah maybe maybe like the the some some kind of like maybe maybe originally it was supposed to be like I wanted dripping with you know fr freshly dripping and then her response you know the the drip will be pee or something you know I'm not saying you can't make a joke like that but they they didn't put in all of the the work to make. A joke like that is is basically what it just it makes no sense and it doesn't come across as supposed to be just a weird thing to say like comparatively you know the the response to that like in in the movie Aquaman and it's in the trailer so you know the there's a joke about how you know they could have solved the problem by peeing and when one of the characters says that, the other character is like, I cannot believe you just said that, because it's kind of a messed up thing to say. And, I, yeah, I think, I guess we're supposed to have, excuse me, the reaction of that, wow, that was really going far. But instead, we're just like, what? What is that? What, is, what does that even mean? And security guard number six, it's going down! Which I guess is how they got the title. And this only has nine connections. That's very, very rare for, yeah. So a remake of The Lift. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Remake of The Lift from 1983. And it references The Invisible Man from 1933. Yeah, they mention it. And Yeah, Casablanca, one of the security guards, says that Ingmar Bergman is an actor, and the other asked if Casablanca. And there's a mini poster in an office for Godzilla King of the Monsters. Attack of the 50-foot 50 50 foot woman in an apartment. Right, and yeah. 
and they reference The Shining because Jennifer suggests that the Millennium Building may have been built on an Indian burial ground. Mark replies Stephen King has a lot to offer, answer for, not offer. Well, I guess, you know, depending on your reading tastes. And yeah, so it's referenced in Americanthorum, I guess, and Midnight Movie with Dick Maas on Scent. The dog lies buried. Oh. Okay. The blonde Labrador Martin in The Dog Lies Buried is played by Buster, the guide dog out of the movie The Shaft. Its reappearance on screen is made possible with courtesy of the Eye Collection. Okie dokie. And the, the soundtrack features Love in an Elevator and Come On by Aerosmith and Chuck Berry, respectively. So, let's see. The... Yeah, so this is Wikipedia. Out of the five out of five reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, four are negative. Common criticisms include that the film was not gripping enough, had a weak storyline, generally unrealistic deaths, weak dialogue, and unconvincing special effects. Yeah, I I don't think the deaths need to be realistic, but not gripping, weak storyline, weak dialogue, and unconvincing special effects. Those are definitely some of the, the problems. And yeah, so the next chunk are going to be, let's see, yeah, so this is, these are the reviews that I found via the film's IMDb external reviews section. And this, again, this is very unusual. There's a, There were only 44 reviews for this, so, I mean, I, yeah, technically, it, it barely had a theatrical run, you know, because because of how close it came out by the yeah when when they were ready to release it in theaters 9/11 happened I, I I'm not wanna I forget if if it had been in theaters at all or if it was just about to go to theaters and then but yeah 9/11 understandably people were you know yeah when I did the review I didn't talk or did I talk anyway I'll just briefly you know the in addition to the the movie, In addition to the movie featuring shots of the Twin Towers, and I think I think it might have been difficult to edit all of those out. I do think most of the lines that are messed up are are ADR. Or, yeah, we don't see the person saying it, so we could just th those could easily be edited out. But yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna. It, this is starting to feel kind of creepy. I'm not gonna. There, there are IMDb use reviews that talk about all the things that are in this movie that bear a kind of creepy resemblance to 9-11s. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, there were only 44 because of, you know, a lot of those reviews are based on DVD and Blu-ray and such. And I was only able to copy in 17. The rest were dead links, other languages, and such. Let's see. So I am just going to skim this until I find, yeah, several people make jokes, you know, this is not the Richard Roundtree shaft, and say that is an unfortunate title of the shaft, and apparently there is a, or wait, was there actually a movie called Elevator? I don't think the title Down is that bad of a... Maybe they should have called it Express Express Elevator to Hell. I think that would have caught people's attention. But Down and The Shaft are really not very compelling titles. And, you know, the, the, the Dutch original is called The Lift. And, 
I mean, technically they could have just called, you know, the... <sighs> Wait, let's see. I feel like there are movies that have very similar... Yeah, actually, come to think of it, I guess possibly they would have had to... But, but yeah, you know, lift... When, when Americans read the word lift, they don't think of elevator. So it wouldn't have worked well for that. I, th I think elevator or express elevator to hell would have been... Let's see. Oh, right, and, and apparently this is the, the tagline to the original. Take the stairs, take the stairs, for God's sakes, take the stairs. That's, that's really good. And let's see. Oh, ah, crap. Sorry, got distracted and accidentally started scrolling in the wrong direction. There we go. And yeah, so yeah, that was it for those. Normally, when it comes to IMDb user reviews, I copy in the 100 voted the most useful, but if there's less than 100, I can just copy in all of them. This only had 73. You know, the movie is 21, yeah, 20 or 21 years old, depending on, yeah, it came out 20 years ago, and there's that few reviews of it. You know, people have had time to discover it and share it with their friends and such. 73, that is... Yeah, a lot of the people who watched it did not actually end up recommending it to anyone. And, yeah, see, I like this. For viewers, it brings you down and gives you the shaft. <laughs> and there's one person who, you know, who, who points out all the good comment titles have been taken. I guess that um, let's see. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of people gave it very low score. And some people aren't even entirely sure if it was meant to be part comedy. Excuse me. Now. Pretty horrendous horror film about a murderous elevator. Parentheses, question mark, exclamation, exclamation point. Parentheses end. That's yeah. Let's see. Yeah. See, I don't know. It's you know, it's possible that this person is is just joking. But here's a person who says this is not horror. It's comedy. It's slapstick. It's parody. It's the Dick Ma's way. So watch it that way. The only difference with a Dutch movie is that they talk English. And of course the original was better, but I liked it. So it's possible that d Dutch movies are intentionally funny. I, I must admit, I, I know very little about Dutch culture. So it's possible that, that's, that their sense of humor is, is, you know, yeah. But it doesn't change anything I criticize the movie for. But it's possible that... It, it does really suck if the movie was basically mostly made the way it was meant, to, that, that the director, it, it almost came out the way he wanted it to, but then, like, for example, the, the lead actor taking things too seriously, you know, that, that is too bad. 
now. Yeah, see, this guy says, Not one of Dick's best. This director used to make good films in the Netherlands. Something has gone very wrong. Cute little golden retriever. Fluffy fur and simply adorable. He was my only highlight of this movie. Unfortunately, his on screen time was rather limited. I was a little surprised that this reviewer did not comment on the fact that the, do the dog dies in a really, like, brutal way. Anyway. Yeah, let's see the And also like yeah, there's the part where like Jennifer asks you know, she's like, I have a question for Gunther for for Mr. Steinberg, something like that. And Mark is like, You can't if you talk about the chips, it's gonna be a huge problem and you know, it is like if she had said had talked about the, the chips, then Gunter would probably have tried to stop her from being able to pop publish the story. I mean, he we know that he killed the other elevator repairman, so but the uh, what's it called? Yeah, the the bit you know, then she's like, um, what's your favorite newspaper? And everybody laughs, and then he responds, Well, definitely not yours, and then everybody laughs. And then Maybe Dan Hedaya or so, you know, one of them is like, well, I think we can all agree with that, and then everybody laughs. It wasn't hilarious, but I could see that, you know, it's, it is clearly a joke. You know, they, they understand that, that, you know, doing that could be funny. Now. Now, it's like the Godfather if the Godfather would have stuck. Yeah, and some Shaft himself would have stayed home. And some people say, you know, how can some people give this such a high rating? And there's at least one user review that went that went into how weird the flirting is. Like basically, oh, actually, yeah, just very briefly, this person said, you know, that Dick Maas is the second best director from Holland and says, number one, Paul Verhoeven. Yeah, the Paul Verhoeven. I, I, I think I will try to find some Dick Maas because, because there's some real promise in this movie. I'd like to watch something of his that people say is better than th that fans of his say is better than this. But I, I, you'd have to work extremely hard to top my list of of the Paul, Paul Verhoeven is an absolute genius. I is he even making movies anymore? But it, certainly in the eighties and nineties, he made some unbelievably amazing movies. Now let's see.
you know, just, yeah, just briefly, RoboCop. One second, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Ah, Total Recall, that's it. And Basic Instinct. I'm not making any excuses for Showgirls, though. And, and I will say, a, a good chunk of Hollow Man is good. It's maybe not amazing. But yeah, the the um, there's at least one person in the user reviews section that points out the f like Jennifer and Mark kind of flirt with each other, but it's I think he used the word antagonistic or hostile or something, and it is like I th I mean when she you know when she says oh I'm you know I I should get to stay I was here with him. And then, you know, then that doesn't work. And then she says, he, he, you know, he raped me. I mean, I guess the idea is supposed to be that then they're going to let go of her and go over and, and grab him so she can get away, I guess. But it's just, and, and then the other guy says, oh, you got good taste. It's just like, it's, I th yeah, I think, I think it's. Like, if, if, I think the intention was for something there to be a joke, but it's kind of the joke equivalent of, like, kind of sleeping in or just like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll do it later. And then they never got around to later. It's, it's legitimately not even an entire joke. It's just, it's, it's a little bit of weird behavior. And then the, yeah. Anyway, the, 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 yeah, and, and, like, she, the, she goes to his place, and, you know, he's got the bat, and she's like, oh, big bat, and, do you like movies? Well, yeah, but I'm not into anything freaky, and, like, I don't like watching people die, and it's just, what, I, I, it, it must be some sort of, of language barrier, or, or something, because occasionally it does work, like, the, the, I, I I laughed at at Ilsa, you know, and the the yeah I've I've mentioned a couple of things in this that made me laugh. So it's not that it's never ever funny, and there are a couple of times I I will say I maintain I saw a couple of reviews say that it's not scary ever. I would say that there are times when it's scary when it's when it's legitimately trying to be scary it's scary and the the deaths are effective like i'm not really a big fan of like making a youtube video just the death scenes of a horror movie i i don't know if you like that sort of thing that's fine i don't tend to watch those but i do think i, I see the, the thing is i wish that the rest of the movie around the the death scenes was a lot better because that's really the only thing it's it's just that it's not yeah and that is everything that that are, those are all of my prepared notes holy crap only two hours and 18 minutes this is very very short by my standards i guess that is the whole thing yeah i think let's see is there any Possible final. I think I'm just briefly gonna gonna show. Let's see. So this is the cover for my DVD. I'm just gonna make sure. Capture the light as far as yeah. Something like that, you know. And yeah, I I guess is that. Is that supposed to be Mary Jane? But the fire has absolutely not, you know, there's never fire like that in the movie, but yeah. But it's a decent enough image overall. Anyway, the, yeah, that is everything I had to say. So I hope you enjoyed watching. As I basically enjoyed watching and definitely enjoyed recording and I'll catch you next time.